In this video, I'll demonstrate how to use remote management tools with NanoServer. Windows NanoServer is a headless operating system, so the only way that we can manage it is remotely over the network using either command line or graphical tools. Here we can use the Server Manager graphical tool installed either on a server that has the GUI or a client operating system. What we can do is go to the Manage menu and we can choose to add NanoServers so that they can be managed in this interface. We can search through Active Directory, through DNS, or we could have a previously prepared import file to get our nano servers into Server Manager. I'm going to go back to the Active Directory tab and click Find Now, and I'm going to add a server called Nano-1. So I'll click OK, and then we'll go to the All Servers view on the left. We can see the Nano-1 server has been added here. The Nano operating system here in Technical Preview 2 reports back Microsoft Windows Server Technical Preview 2 Tuva as its version. Other servers that don't have the word Tuva but yet are listed as Microsoft Windows Server Technical Preview 2 are the server operating system installed either with or without the GUI. But they are different from Nano Server. So there are really three flavors of Windows Server Technical Preview 2 that you can work with. Once the nano server has been added here, we can right click and do things such as restarting the server, entering a remote PowerShell session with the server, configuring NIC teaming, and in this case, it's detected that I've got the fill over cluster manager feature installed, so that shows up as well. Now, before this product is finalized and released, we can reasonably assume that there will be more options available when we right click on a nano server and manage it in server manager. For example, you'll notice that the add roles and features is grayed out, yet if I go to the dashboard and choose add roles and features, and then if I select my nano server, I in fact do have the option in the GUI of modifying roles and role services installed on that remote nano server, as well as features. I'm going to cancel out of that. Let's also take a look at the registry editor. The registry editor tool, when you start it, by default, shows you the local registry on your machine. However, we can go to the file menu and we can connect over the network to another host. Here I'm going to connect to our nano server remotely over the network so we can work with its registry. Nano server is designed to be a very small, lightweight operating system that only has the components you're using. And that's even apparent when we look at the registry. There's not very much there. We also have the option in the file system of simply mapping drive letters to shares on nano servers. Here I've mapped the drive letter to the C$ administrative share on my server called nano-2. And in this way, it's really no different than any other mapped drive to a shared folder. We can see the file system on the nano server. We can work with it. For example, if we go into the program files locations, we notice that there's not very much going on there. And again, remember, Nano Server is designed to be very small and lightweight. It only has the components that you add and configure. Notice that one of those components that's automatically included that you don't have to add is Windows Defender. And as a matter of fact, the service is running by default. Let's go into PowerShell. Here in PowerShell, I'm going to enter a remote session with our Nano Server. Once we've entered the remote session, we can issue commands as if we were sitting at the server, which of course is not possible with the Windows Nano Server operating system. So for example, to get a list of running processes, I could type get process, or what I might also do is run git dash command, and just for fun, I might pipe that to the measure commandlet to see how many commandlets are available here in the Nano Server. And we can see that we have 634. Now, normally, with the Windows Server operating system with various roles and features installed, you will have thousands of commandlets available. So again, Nano Server is designed to be very small and lightweight. However, here in Technical Preview 2, you'll notice that some things, such as Get Service, do not work. So it's not been built in yet. However, we could run it remotely. So if I exit this PowerShell session, I could run Get Service, and I could specify the computer name parameter and specify a nano host, and in this way we would still be able to get that resultant output even though it doesn't work locally within the session on the nano host. We also have the option of looking at other tools like Performance Monitor. Here in Performance Monitor, I'm going to click the green plus sign and I'm going to specify my nano-1 server. 
after a moment, it shows me the categories of items or counters that I can monitor based on what's installed on that remote nano server. So, for example, maybe under processor, I'll go down and I'll add the percent processor time on the remote nano host, total of all instances running. So now we can see that we've added our item or our counter for our nano server. Now we can remove the original one that was there for the local machine. So now we're truly only monitoring processor utilization on the remote nano host. If your nano server is running as a Hyper-V virtual machine guest, then you can also use the Hyper-V manager to work with that virtual machine. However, if you go to double click on a nano server to open up its console to the interface, you'll realize very quickly that there really is no interface because nano is a headless operating system. So really, there's nothing that we can do at that level. Remember, it's designed to be managed remotely over the network. We can also use the event viewer logs remotely against a nano server. For example, here I'm going to go to the tools menu in server manager where I'll choose event viewer. Now the event viewer by default shows the logs on the local host, but I'm going to right click on event viewer and I'm going to choose connect to another computer. At this point, I'm going to specify my nano-1 nano server and I'll go ahead and click OK. We can now see that the event viewer reflects the fact that we're viewing the logs on the nano server. So if we wanted to see how things were doing or if there were any problems, then we would be able to do it. We could also do this remotely using PowerShell commandlets as well.